Coming up on this week's Gadget Show Web TV, John's reviewing the latest HTC running on Windows Phone 7. I look at the best tech to save you cash and bring you this week's best tech news. Hello and welcome to this week's Web TV. Coming up, I give you the top five gadgets to help save you some cash. But first up, John's been looking at the brand new HTC HD7, running the latest operating system from Microsoft Windows Phone 7. But the question on everyone's lips is, can it really compete with the OS from Apple or Android? Over to John Bentley to find out. This week saw the launch of Windows Phone 7, replacement for the much unloved Windows 6.5 Mobile. And I've been trying it out on the new HTC HD7. It's a complete transformation for Windows on a phone. The start screen is very attractive. You've got uh, these interactive tiles, which you can pin or unpin. Alternatively, you can press the right button there and you can get through to a whole list of all the applications you've got installed on the phone. Either way, you link straight through to sort of application hubs, which again have the same sort of horizontal and vertically controlled interface. You get a very clean looking screen. You can type reasonably well, actually very well, in fact, on the um, on-screen keyboard. And if you want more details, for example, on uh, whether you're connected to a Wi-Fi network or the state of your signal, you can pull down a curtain from the top of the screen. There's a version of Internet Explorer included, which gives you a pretty good web browsing experience, actually. Instead of contacts, you get a people application. This can integrate with Facebook, but not with Twitter, to throw all your contacts together. The only trouble is then, as well as the numbers you use most frequently, you also get updates from everybody you happen to know on Facebook, which can be a little overwhelming. There's also an Xbox Live application, which should allow you to sign in with your gamer tag, see who of your friends are online, and also download games to play on the phone. The only trouble is it doesn't seem to be working very well yet in my experience. There's a very cut down version of Microsoft Office, which allows you to create one notes and create and edit uh, Word and Excel documents. But it does seem very, very basic. I found it had trouble opening a spreadsheet, which I've opened successfully on other phones in Quick Office, for example. And while you're using Office, I found I noticed immediately that the phone didn't have cut and paste. I'd created two documents and I wanted to cut a bit of one out and put it in the other. I couldn't. That's a move back from older versions of Windows Mobile. Another problem is that there's no external storage on the phone at all. You can't slip in a memory card. And it seems to me the only way of getting a document you've created off the phone is via email, which is a bit restrictive. And getting photos, videos and music on and off your phone is also a very restricted process. You have to download a piece of software called Zoom, put it on your computer and use that to do it. It's almost like Microsoft's version of iTunes. And you can also shop for uh, music or applications through it, or indeed do it through the uh, application on the phone itself. Obviously, the number of apps available through the store is still very small compared with iTunes or Android, but the basics have already started to appear. I've downloaded some competent ones for uh, Facebook, Twitter, IMDB, and vitally, of course, YouTube. And while you're looking at apps, you'll notice there's no multitasking with third-party apps, and also that many of the apps don't remember where you left off and start again at the beginning, which clearly is an area that needs work. As for the HD7 itself, well, it's pretty much normal large screen HTC. It's got a very acceptable 5 megapixel camera. Uh, it's got a very responsive touch screen, although the actual definition and quality of the colors I don't think is quite up there with HTC's best. And of course, it has pretty frightening battery life. However, the important thing here is Windows Phone 7. And although it's not quite as open as Android, I get the same sort of feelings about it as I did with Android when I first tried the Google G1. It's, it's a delight to use. It really does have an enormous amount of potential. And if Microsoft stick with it, as it looks as though they will, it's going to develop that whole ecosystem of apps around it and become a serious player in the smartphone market. Right, news time now, and first up, Apple have announced a whole host of new products during Wednesday's press conference, including a new MacBook Air, 
OSX 10.7 Live, FaceTime from the Mac and iLife 11. The MacBook Air is now available in both 11 and 13 inch models and weighing just 2.3 pounds makes it Apple's lightest and most portable notebook. It uses the same solid state technology as the iPad to make boot up speeds almost instant and it has up to 7 hours worth of battery life and 30 days standby time. Prices start at £849 making it a really affordable option to jump into the MacBook market. FaceTime will now be available on Macs as an app that will allow you to video call iPhone 4 and iPod Touch users as well as other Macs. It works using the built-in camera and mic on a Mac notebook and iMacs and works in very much the same way as a standard webcam chat. And finally, Apple gave a sneak peek of OS X Line, the eighth major release of their operating system. It's due to launch next summer and will include a new Mac App Store, which will install and download all of your desktop apps, Launchpad, a brand new home for your Mac apps, and Mission Control, which unifies Expose, Dashboard, Spaces, and all of your full screen apps, putting them into a new view of everything running on your Mac, allowing you to instantly navigate anywhere. Next up, Sky is looking to roll out Anytime Plus to other ISPs, saying it won't be limited to just Sky Broadband customers. Sky Anytime Plus will give you access to a virtual library of entertainment, including around 500 movies, series box sets, documentaries and much, much more, all ready to watch whenever you want through an online connection. All of the content will of course depend on your Sky TV subscription. One of the pre-launch problems has been Sky's decision to limit Anytime Plus to standard definition broadcasts rather than continuing the high quality HD content. Either way, we're really excited about Anytime Plus and believe it gives Sky users much more freedom with their TV viewing. So here's hoping Sky will make it as accessible to as many ISPs as possible. Now, if you saw Monday Night Show, you'll have noticed that being a gadget-hungry consumer can add to those electricity bills. But with a few handy bits of tech, you can make sure that those bills don't spiral out of control. Yes, so I've got some interesting energy-saving tech that can help you save on those bills, allowing you to put those extra pennies towards a new shiny gadget fund. Having an alarm clock on your bedside table is all well and good, but leaving it on 24-7 can add to those bills. So if you want to eliminate this entirely, you might want to invest in one of these. A water-powered clock. It works with an internal converter that simply extracts electrons from the water molecules and provides a steady stream of electrical current acting as a fuel cell to generate power to the clock. And with one fill, it can keep it running for up to 6 to 12 months. They come in various shapes and sizes and most of them come equipped with fully functioning alarms, so there's still no excuse for oversleeping in the mornings. In at number four, it's the Eco Phone. Another gadget that is always on in your home is the cordless phone. If you're an owner of one of these, it's constantly hooked up to power and draining juice even when the phone isn't connected. So to help with this, you could start by using one of these, an Eco Phone. They use up to 60% less energy than your standard cordless phone. With its intelligent battery charger that minimises power use even if you leave the charger plugged in but unconnected to the phone. And when the phone is docked in its base station, it will reduce radiation and transmission power to almost zero when the phone is fully charged. And being eco doesn't have to limit its tech credentials as it offers all the features of any domestic house phone including communication around the home using this intercom button and the option of three-way conference calling. In at three, it's the Robert Solar DAB Radio. The Robert Solar DAB is the world's first solar-powered DAB radio. It's a great compact radio with a solar panel built onto the top of the unit, which can absorb direct sunlight in order to power the radio, making it not only cheaper to run, but really portable too. The brightness of the solar button on the front of the unit determines just how much power is being received from the sunlight, and on really sunny days, it can generate enough power to charge both the batteries and play the radio at the same time. And once fully charged, the low power consumption of the solar DAB allows the batteries to power the radio for up to 27 hours without the need to recharge them. And even when the sun shies away, the radio can still be used by the mains, again charging the batteries for portable use. In at two, it's the energy saving kit with motion sensor. With 
so many gadgets and appliances hooked up all around the home, it can be hard to keep track of what's turned on and off. And you can waste up to £37 a year just by leaving your tech on standby or on their power save modes. So if you want to eliminate that cost completely, I'd highly recommend investing in a set of these. The Bye Bye Standby Kit simply plugs into any wall socket to control any appliance up to 1000 watts. Simply set a house and play unit code, plug an appliance into it and you can completely power everything on and off with the remote control. And what's more, you can even get an optional motion sensor kit like this one to power off all of your gadgets whenever you leave the room. So if you forget to use the remote control or if you accidentally misplace it, it's not a problem as when no more motion is detected in the room, it sends a signal to the plug and shuts everything off. And in at number one, it's this Philips LED TV. Now, as proved by Monday Night Show, the most power hungry gadget in the home is the television. So if you're in the market for a new one that's eco-friendly, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to scrimp on quality. This Philips is one of their latest LED backlit screens that not only makes up for a much slimmer TV with superior picture quality and amazing contrast ratios, but it's also up to 40% more energy efficient than your standard plasma and LCD screen. And this is due to the latest technology they use to power and light the screen. As you can see, even with this power reduction, the colours and picture are amazing. So even with its eco credentials, this Philips TV ticks all the boxes for being a high quality television and stands head and shoulders above your average 40 inch LCD TV. Well, that's all we've got time for, but we'll be back next week with more news and reviews. The main show is on your screens Monday nights at 8 on 5, and this week, Jason and Pollyanna go for a high-octane challenge as they enter the annual Silverline Power Tools Championship. They both have to design and race their very own mean machines, driven by the most powerful hand tools they can lay their hands on. John sets out to find the best ways to protect yourself online, and Susie gets physical with Olympic medalist Amy Williams as they select their top five favourite home fitness gadgets. But from me here at Web TV, it's bye for now.